All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome hey. to the Weekly Word episode number. I we I should have looked that up after we fucked. I fucked up the first one. <laughs> so we spent like episode seven number October the sixteenth. Yeah, October the sixteenth. The Weekly Word is still hey, everybody. Now. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> well, actually, it's Thursday. Um, so we kind of went on a bit of a rant with a bunch of random crap. Um, we did. So do you want to continue kind of where we left off? We're just talking about your stuff, and then we'll go back to my. Continuing in the middle of a thread would seem weird. Um, um, no, no, I'm saying like so. So I asked oh. what you what you've been up to, and you and you said you've been working a lot. I've and definitely been working a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, for people who don't know, which is everyone online, mm-hmm. I work in science. And yeah, tell me what it's like to be a scientist. <laughs> What's it like being a person that contributes something to the betterment of mankind? So here's the secret about science, mm-hmm. aside from you know it being a method of answering and asking questions as opposed mm-hmm. to this like universal mandate for truth which everyone seems to <laughs> think it is when <laughs> clashing it against Jesus or whatever <laughs> the fuck ever uh-huh. so working in science people okay people online people I talk to mm-hmm. have you know the idea of science fuck yeah science fuck perseveres yeah, science. Yeah. yeah which is rad that, that's, but that's I, not the mentality I like of the world I like seeing it yeah but when you actually work in science, mm-hmm. what it is is doing a lot of the same thing over and over and over again to try and reproduce results, to try and get statistics. It's a tedious process, and I'm not going to say it's boring, mm-hmm. but it's very slow. Very slow. Okay. It's very slow and detail oriented. Do you wish for that one day that you do the same thing over and over again and it's a different result? Because that's madness. Well, a lot of times. <laughs> A lot of the time, that's what happened, and uh-huh. it's usually your fault. You for... fucked up so <laughs> somewhere. Was, somewhere you you put instead of two plus two equals four, you put two plus two equals fish, and calculate the mass of the sun. And yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, human error. It, it's one of you know seventy six variables that you didn't uh, account for. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's why I don't. I don't math. I, I've never math. I have no interest in mathing. I anyway, math. it's fun. We're commissioning a new machine. We just. Uh, Stopped running the Synchrotron Light Source One, which mm-hmm. has been up for like three, three, five years, something like that. Okay. And you know, it, it still had users. It was still a functional machine, but it was definitely showing its age, and it was spilling radiation into the atmosphere. I get no. it. No. <laughs> uh huh. No, it finally crested that point where it was no longer useful worth pumping money into as mm-hmm. opposed to replacing mm-hmm. yeah it's like an old car you know you can keep trying to fix it up but eventually it's eventually just, it's just time to it move turns on into a sinkhole yeah until you get a tesla and then it's the last car you'll ever need supposedly supposedly you say in theory three years Elon into musk <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway that's what he wants you to believe um so this to wrap up this boring ass science talk, no no, no I, I find it fascinating okay you know me i've been working a lot i'm back to doing shifts but it's when he means shifts what he means is he's working 12 hours straight every day every day or is it every other day every other day so that's working that's like being a nurse where you like work 12 hours on 12 hours out people go insane that way the thing is the human body isn't made to work that long i tend to go in on my days off sometimes because it's just there's so much happening right now that i don't really want to miss it See that's cool. <laughs> so you're is it, it's, it's exciting. It is exciting. It's mm-hmm. tiring as fuck, but mm-hmm. it's exciting. That's interesting you say because you just said that that it's also tedious. So it's tedious and exciting. Some parts of science are exciting. Mm-hmm. Some parts of science are tedious. The I stuff we've got going right now, it's all like commissioning brand new stuff, and that's mm-hmm. rad. By the way, ladies, if you if, well, if any of you are actually watching this, if any of you are ladies, <laughs> you'll notice that I was listening, and I'm a listener. Like you know, wouldn't love that. <laughs> nah. Um, <laughs> so, so that's great. That's great that you're slapping. <laughs> that you're doing something that like you're. It's exciting. Like that's yeah. the thing. I think work. People, people now, they look at work as a way of um, of maintaining a lifestyle. Whereas I think, in the past, when you like had a um, a profession like a trade skill. It was like there was value in Something it. Something that you took pride in. Yeah. If any of you ever read like Marxism stuff that like or Marxist stuff that isn't the Communist Manifesto like his other work, 
um, he, he has this idea of, like, work, the purity of work being in the work itself, where, like, the value of it is to do the work. Like, making a shoe is valuable in and of that, like, you, you do it. Like, it's not like, oh, like, I'm, there's a value in this because it costs money, or, like, I'm being paid for my yeah. time. It's that, like, yeah, I'm creating something with joy actual creation. value. Like, yeah. this, this helps the world. And not just creation for the sake of making something... Of stupid, yeah, something, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and I think that's something that there's I think... There's value in that, too. Yeah, I think there's something our society has lost in that, though. Because it's, like, my job, my personal job, is that, like, I'm, I'm in HR, and, and, or I'm, I'm an HR professional. And so, my work is a work of... This is getting super personal. No, it's, it, I just think... Right. I mean, honestly, the weekly word, well, I know it's supposed I mean, to be like our nerd stuff, but I feel like a conversa- any kind of intellectual conversation is something that maybe something somebody finds interesting. So. All right, I mean, just, you and I talking anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, if you don't like it, <laughs> fuck you. I mean, we'll start, We'll talk about nerd stuff later, but like... Um, oh, yeah, no, we got some nerd shit to talk about. Yeah. New York Comic Con just happened. Yeah, we yeah were and we were there. No, I was there. You were there. I dropped you, by. You dropped by. Um, but I find that... The, 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 um, that the value of work is like because John was telling me today and this is uh, weirdly relating to this where he's like you know I want to find a job or or, like do something where I can just get this massive payout like I don't want to do the grind anymore I'm like I think the grind is the thing John's always been kind of the entrepreneurial yeah he's very entrepreneurial how are we going to strike it rich but I think there's a value in the work itself and this is actually tying back to what we originally talked about because we were talking about I actually joined a creative writing group um, and we we're talking about like people's talent, like like a neat talent um, versus versus like gain skill. And I think that there's something there's a valuable thing in, in gaining skill because I feel like you have all like you have this is gonna get all preachy and shit, but it's like you have one life. <laughs> I feel like you should spend that life bettering yourself or bettering the world around you. I feel like that's really honestly like what a, what a person should strive for. That's my that's my personal thing. In all things, it's balance. Mm-hmm. It's Hey, like last, like this, this season of Legend of Korra, balance. Oh. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, making yourself happy versus mm-hmm. making yourself satisfied with what you're doing. Right. Like, you can be satisfied in what you're doing and to maintain sure. your lifestyle, and but then there's also like you I mean, being happy, like like there's like a, like an enjoyment of what you do. Sitting around reading books, you know, playing games, hanging mm-hmm. out with friends, that makes me happy. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't do that all the time. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make me happy. Right, yeah, no, I mean, you go crazy. Sometimes I, um... I feel like a piece of shit, because I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Did you ever play World of Warcraft? No. Okay, God, I no. played a lot of World of Warcraft, and, um, at, in the beginning, and I've tried to go back into it a couple times, like, I've, I've tried to dip my feet back into it, mm-hmm. and, um, nothing is ever the same as that first time. And I think the reason why is because at some point, like during when you first start playing the game, because that novelty is gone. No, it's not that. Well, no. Weirdly enough, it's the opposite. the The novelty was there initially, driving me through the game. But then when I reached the end, the end was a grind. And I know I'm sure a lot of gamers out there know that term where it's like a grind, where you're just doing the same thing over and over again to either gain gear or gain something, like a like a like a lot of effort for a very small gain. And, and that was the thing I missed. And that's really weird. Was the grind? Was the grind. Because it's almost this repetitive action that's, like, keeping me entertained. And it's, like, like the new stuff. The new stuff, I have no... Like, it's, like, doesn't catch me as the same because I actually missed well, the... The grind, you can just kind of turn your brain off or yeah. do something else while... Yeah, almost like this mindless enjoyment yeah. stuff. So, yeah. anyway. I feel like that's... We've we've waxed agnosium for nine wow nine minutes on that. And, um, so let's move off to like we kind of got to the nerd stuff with talk about wow, but um, let's talk about you know kind of like maybe like are you reading anything? Are you playing anything new? Um, I just got done with a bunch of Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, you did. Which leads us pretty well into what the fuck happened this weekend. I know. Okay, so as many of you know, New York Comic Con was this past weekend. Yep. Um. I was in attendance. I was lucky enough. My girlfriend was lucky and awesome enough to score two passes for the Saturday um, event. That's so we went. Pretty freaking boss. Uh, that was so cool. Um, I was in the city to hang out with a friend of mine who I never see, mm-hmm. partially because he was stationed in, in Japan for the last three years. Oh. And came back with a wife and a kid. What? 
Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's and weird, isn't it? He's here for a little bit, and then he's moving back to, to Japan? Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Actually, so he's going to be on the West Coast. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I'll see him sooner than later. Much sooner than Japan. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, that's really but, cool. Yeah, so I was hanging out with him on Saturday, mm -hmm. and coming back... We, we up met up, Because I knew so... the, the con was going on. But before that... So, um... I get a text from Andy. Yeah, going into the con, um... I had never been to a Comic-Con before. This is my first time, and it was... I really enjoyed it. But, um... Lucky Perfect. enough, uh... No. We had gone, and, um... You know, I, I was like, Oh, this is cool. I like comic books. I like video games. This will be fine. Um... And I'm walking around, and I see this booth full of books. And you know me and books. Yep. Um... And it's the Penguin booth. And I'm like, Oh, that's cool. It's... I mean, Penguin Random House. That's cool. I'll yeah. go up. And so, I like, I'm like, Oh, hey, like, you know, I like books. You like books, obviously, since you're here. Um, what do you guys have going on today? And they're like, oh, we have panels and stuff. Some authors are here. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, what's the list Who? of authors? And I'm like, oh, well, like, it's right here. And I'm like, cool. And I'm like looking down. I'm looking through. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, and then like my name, my eyes hit this name. And I'm like, oh, Brandon Sanderson is here. So Andy and I both have a giant hard on for, for Brandon, Brandon Sanderson. Sanderson. Like, and for his writings. And yeah. Goddamn. Yeah. So the worlds like, he creates are so good. I know. He's got these really, really good, like internally consistent magic systems. Mm-hmm. That feel like they would make excellent video games. He does really good at characterization. He does great fucking action scenes. Like his fight scenes are so good. See the thing. Um, weirdly enough, like there's like a, uh, I was talking to somebody about about fight scenes in general, and they were talking about like how like, you know, books have the t have a tough time with action scenes, and that like it can't be like a movie where it's like Jackie Chan's kicking and punching for twenty minutes. Because that's like a third of the movie, like like an hour and a half movie. Twenty right. minutes is a large part of that. You can't have like just like one scene of guys like kicking and punching for a six of the book. That'd be insane. <laughs> um, but but what books do, and the, the advantage books have is like it's a very like you can like talk about the emotional part of a fight, and his his fights always have that, and I always find that really interesting. Yeah. Actually, specifically, I don't really want to spoil anything about Words of Radiance. Uh, um, yeah. Are you, are you talking about the... The fight, the last fight. The Kaladin fight? Yeah, the Kaladin fight. Yeah. So we're not talking about that. Um, okay. But uh, in some it, of his earlier it, books... Um, if anyone's actually reading Words of Radiance... Finish it. One, finish it. Two, get at us. Yeah. And we'll, three, we'll talk about it. we're going to try not to spoil it for you. Yeah, we will. Um, yeah, so like, I, I was lucky enough, I got to... And, the, and what was even better was the fact that he was on a panel... Um, Oh, which yeah. was like super fascinating. He, it was it was a talk, it was a talk about villains and like how um how, like how how writers approach villains and like like um basically like what they kind of bring to fantasy like just books and or stories in yeah, general. Fiction. And it was really interesting to see that because it's like the panel was amazing and, and and if it's up online, I would really recommend anyone trying to find it. Uh, I hope it is. But um, uh, yeah, Reed's been doing that lately for the past couple of years like mm -hmm. broadcasting stuff broadcasting I, I know they do for PAX they might for New York Comic Con Google it yeah if, it's if there, you can find, find it, it it's really good actually I ask a question uh, in it so oh. if you get that yeah no the, did I tell you about that? no oh man this is super this is actually super chill um, so like all the, the whole panel was about villains um, so like I was like hey have any of you guys ever read a book or like seen a movie or a story and you see a character that like is like Helping the main cast, like like they're like helping like achieve the goal, but they're like not good people, like they're villainous. And I was like, I guess the way I'm trying to say this is like, I've, I when I read Lord of the Rings, I thought Tom Bombadil was pretty like I, I read him as like this evil kind of creature, and I know that's not really normal. I thought I thought you were getting it like Gollum. No, 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 no. Well, that too, that is a good example of that. But no, no, I think. Okay, I have this this idea that Tom Bombadil is like probably like the most evil creature in all of Lord of the Rings mythology, and yeah. Okay, hear me I out. Just listen to that fucking song. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, right? Um, I hope really hope Tom Bombadil. Sorry. No, that's no, fine. It's fine. Um, so here's the thing. Well, here's the thing. You know, like in the books, like um, and also the movies. The movies are also portray this maybe, and maybe this might be more of a movie thing than a book thing, but like. Magical creatures in Lord of the Rings have an, like almost like an effect on the world around them. So like when the, the Fellowship get to uh, Lothlorien mm -hmm. and Gladriel's there, it's like this very peaceful place um, because she's like this person of light. And then when you get to Mordor, Mordor's just shitty. Mordor's, Mordor's like this black volcano-like place because it's just fucking evil as shit. 
Now, where does Tom Bombadil live? In the old forest. Like, the most You're evil like, fucking place is the old outside forest of Mordor. Evil? It's, like, full of, like... Tr- it's like it's very self-contained. It's self- yeah, it's very self-contained, but it's there's so- a lot of, like, murder... Like, the trees are, like... Like, no one comes out of the old forest, like... It, prote- it protects its own. It protects that's its own. why it's yeah. the old. That's why it's so old. Yeah, exactly. That's how it's got yeah, so old. Yeah, it's like old. it's not a great place to be. Um, <laughs> and so like that, and the, and the weirdest part is, and, the, and this is so random, and I know this is like really anal about it, but like Tom Bombadil is like the way they portray him, like in the book, is like so fucking cheerful and so merry, like too cheerful. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they live. Like, how far is the Old Forest from the Shire? It's not that far. You feel like you hear about this, like, immortal, like, tall-ish hobbit guy that drinks and sings and parties all the time, and that would never get back to the Shire at all. It was, like, ten, like, like three hours away. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm thinking, like, almost like Tom Bombadil is a, like, tr- not trickster, but, like, this, like, spirit that has taken on, like, the persona of, like, Tom Bombadil, and, like, is, like, being like, hey, like, you guys are, like, hobbits that, like, love to party and stuff, so we'll, like, be all... Let's party. Let's party. Let's party. And, like, and, um, and, and, uh, when they get to Rivendell, they, they're like, hey, let's give Tom Bombadil a ring. He's, like, this super awesome guy. He's super powerful. And then Gandalf's like, no. No. Like, that won't work. Like, they don't say why. He's just like, it won't work. He has some bullshit reasons. But, like, I feel like the book, like, portrays it as, like, subtle hints that he's, like, this, like, malif- like um, malignant spirit. So, anyway, that's... That, anyway, Did, that's, Have you ever got into the Cimmerillion at all? No. I tried, and it's... It's a history book. It's too dense. It's too dense. I can't. Lord of the Rings was my limit. Yeah. When anyway. we talk about epic fantasy, like... Oh, uh... You said you asked that as a question of the panel. Yeah. What they what they say? Um, Did anyone get back? Brandon Sanderson. Good? Actually, yeah, I was like, because I was like looking at Brandon Sanderson when I said it, because because he's right. he's my idol. Because <laughs> you can't not like a Brandon I, Sanderson uh, if he's there. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. It's like my eyes were just locked in like one day. We're buddies. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, he's like Han Solo. Like before they ruined him in like the remastered Star Wars thing. It's like because the reality is like in the first movie, kind of a shitty dude. He's a shitty guy. Because, like, he shoots first, he's a dick. And that's the thing, and that's, like, that whole story, and, like, that whole story pays off in the ending where he comes back, is because you don't expect him to come back. You know? Like, he, like, he's out for himself, he's out for the money, he'll, and that's why, and the Greedo shooting, like, him shooting Greedo first is, like, kind of like that, like, that's the moment you know. The icing on the cake, yeah. The icing on the cake. And, um, and then when he comes back, it's like, oh my god, this is, like, this guy's, like, not that bad of a dude. Which is a huge payoff. But I was like, but like for the most of the movie, Han Solo is just out for his own. It's not really like helping the alliance because he no. wants to help and save the world. He's just out to get his money. And I think that I think that and, like and or the girl and or the girl or both. Yeah, and or. Um, so anyway, I think um, so. The panel was awesome. Huh. We had a great day. I got a signed copy yes. of uh, Wave Kings for you and Abby, which was boss. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I. I would have, and and I would have gotten something for myself. The fact is, I had all those books signed by him already because, like I said, I'm a huge fan. Um, so you know, it was I it's definitely the ho- super lucky. Oh yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it was definitely the highlight of my day. Um, I'm trying to think, if there was anything else that was like really worth mentioning other than that awesome thing? Um, Did you play any games? I didn't. I didn't. You know what? The Did you see any games? No, I didn't. I didn't. Huh. I was walking around and oh, I did? saw. Were you on that part of the show for? I was. I you know what the thing is. I think it was all like off, like in a corner, and I and I really didn't go over there. I kind of I saw the wet. Here's the thing. I didn't know this about Comic Con is that like all the stuff in Comic Con is like this giant like almost like commercial thing where like people are buying and selling comics. Oh and yeah, stuff. I knew that. But there was like there's like this weird disparity between like the comic stuff and then like the super expensive memorabilia things. Like, there was, like, a Weta shop there, like, the people that did special effects for Lord of the Rings and stuff, oh, and then yeah, there was yeah, a guy yeah. that, like, I guess the guy that, like, makes, like, replicas of, like, video game guns, like, there was, like, this Mass Effect gun, and I was like, oh my god, I want that so badly, and it was, like, $900, and I'm like, not that much. Don't want it that much. Uh, so, um, 
but it was really awesome that I that it was it was an amazing experience and, I, and my girlfriend doesn't watch these videos but honey if you're watching I love you and I want you to know that um, I th I thank you for letting me do that that was that's the first comic con you've been to first time ever wow yeah it, so yeah uh, you you but you said you've been to comic con I before. forget that not everyone volunteers at these things for yeah. ten years yeah yeah you well yeah you volunteer a lot of cons, right? I mean, like, PACs and... Yeah. I yeah. worked at New York Comic Con a couple times, worked a couple different PACs, like, in Seattle, Boston. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I volunteer, like... Is it different? Is it... Have you ever... volunteer been, have cancer you, walks now. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I work, I work those with John. Uh-huh. Do you, um... Not John Lerner. Yeah, no, different John. John. You're... Yeah. I, I know what you meant. Um, <laughs> you did. Do they you... probably did do you, I mean, because, like, you, you've gone as both a, like, just a guest mm -hmm. and, like, a person that actually helps out. Yeah. Um, is there, is there, like, a massive difference? Like, do you find that there's a difference in, like, yeah. how, how the con, like, how you see the con? Definitely. Yeah. It, as an attendee, it's much more relaxed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of in control of your schedule and your time. Yeah, your own destiny. You get to see a lot more of the show. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, like, doing it as a volunteer... Like, there's a massive feeling of knowing that you're part of making this really cool thing work. For other people. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I still had a lot of fun. I didn't get to see as much of the show, but I got to see, like, different things that, you know, honestly, unless you're in the same spot a lot, you're not going to see. You're not going to see patterns. You're not going to put together. Like, mm -hmm. the first, the very first year I worked PAX was, like, 2006 in Seattle. And I was in console free play. Mm-hmm. You know, watched a whole bunch of Dead Rising because that was that was the game just that was coming out, out yeah. There. And that was oh when the God. first Guitar Hero <laughs> came out. And yeah, I you're like blown away by it. I was blown away by the game, mm. but more so by like the people playing it and just kind of you know all day people drifting in and out and you know talking with us and having fun interacting with each other and just kind of watching how people interacted with Guitar Hero in mm -hmm. that you know the game had just come out like two months ago yeah that was like a phenomenon seeing that was really cool yeah and then immediately I went and bought, bought a Guitar, bought Hero Guitar Hero for Dave and I at home <laughs> and I'll tell you what if I if I to this day, when mm -hmm. I hear like the first opening riffs of Smoke on the Water, I just want to kick someone in the throat. <laughs> and in my head, it sounds like... Thanks, Star Hero. <laughs> oh, weird anyway. music. Um, weirdly enough, because like, I was... We have a massive difference in age. Like, I guess, how old were you in, when, in 2006, if you want me asking? Or, uh, 2006, I was 22? 22. So we're, we have a pretty different age. So you're, you're like six years older than me. Yeah. So, like, my experience with Guitar Hero <laughs> was um, almost like this, like, weird discovery of music. Like, I, I, um, I probably mentioned this to you. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Uh, didn't really have a didn't really have a lot of people like, yeah Club yeah now I do <laughs> uh, so um, I didn't really have that experience where like oh man like check out these like guess what yeah me too I know I know that's <laughs> probably why we're friends now um, but we didn't have I didn't have like people like saying like oh check out this band check out this band like my introduction to Nirvana was Guitar Hero oh. that, and I only tell you and that in confidence and then everyone on the internet that <laughs> whatever but um, I mean like that yeah. game and like games like that were like. Yeah, like, early high school, I started yeah. getting way into music and, you know, made friends through that. Yeah, I didn't make friends kind of a that. thing. Yeah. Before high school was pretty bad. Dude, oh my god, what, Dude, what's during, that like? During high school, I became very, very comfortable with being kind of, you know, a drifter and a loner. Me too. And it was good. And I made friends through that. But yeah. I didn't have a click, and that was what brought us all together. See, I had that, except I didn't have that whole bring it all together at no. the end. Yeah. I just didn't have a click. And it was fine enough. Um, oh. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, weirdly enough, I, uh... And, and... 
I don't want to tell this story actually on the internet. All right, this one. Um, but tell me um, after. yeah, I'll tell you after, and you're gonna. You know, this is funny. I think I probably told you this already. Um, but was it your first concert? No, 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 no. no it's and actually, you, oh my god! And you went first, to see the Spice Girls? Oh my god! No, my first concert. <laughs> oh my god! I was, I was. I'll tell you my first concert. Yeah, yeah. Tell yours. me your first concert. Okay. Um, my first concert, like, my first, like, real band concert was, I went to a Maroon 5 concert. Whoa! When I was 10. I've been to some pretty terrible shows. Uh, I've gone to a Nickelback concert. Oof. Yeah, that was rough. Um, Papa Roach was the opening act. I saw Papa Roach at Warp Tour. Yeah. Like, when they first... To had that one song. Oh, man, I that went to the worst song. Warped Tour. The one year I went, it was just, like, full of shitty, shitty alternative bands. Like, it was, like... Fair people, like, It wasn't even, like, oh, bands that, like, became big later, or, like, they were, like, trying to get their markets. Like, just no a, one just made it out of... Year. No one made it out of that Warped <laughs> Tour alive. At all. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Though... And I, and and but I do want to hear your first concert. So tell me about your first oh. concert, and then I want to talk about our best concert. My first concert, I accidentally won tickets on the radio. <laughs> you ex- <laughs> oh <my>. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. All right, I want to hear this. Well, it's just, no, it's just one of those where hey, we're doing a thing. Blah, blah, blah. I call in, be caller number seven, and you know what the fuck you're talking about. And I was you caller number him? seven, mm-hmm. and I think it was because like the first person that called somehow couldn't win. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what the hell I was talking about, but they gave me the tickets anyway. Oh. And it was to go see uh, No Doubt, like Tragic Kingdom, No mm-hmm. Doubt, right. and Weezer. Oh. Mm-hmm. It, no Doubt was the headliner, and Weezer mm-hmm. was opening for them. This was right after oh, Pinkerton wow. came out. Wow. So after you know winning those tickets, I bought my first CD, which was Pinkerton. That was your first CD ever? That was my great book. Great CD. Wow. It still is a great CD. Yeah, it's really that, cool. That, that was the beginning. Nice. I bought my first CD. And that was my first mosh pit. And I never looked back. Because <laughs> you couldn't see, because you, both your eyes were like fucking black. I know. Black eyes shut. I mean, because I absolutely love. Love the experience. Going to concerts where the crowd is just as much a part of it as the band is. That's, that's, really awesome. that's the concert experience for me. I am. Um, Which is why most of the shows I go to now are, you know, little things that are like six bucks and in sweaty little basements and bars and stuff. Yeah. Oh, sad bar. We need to go back to sad bar. Let's go back to sad bar. Yeah. Today's, it's 11 o'clock. We can't go to sad bar right now. No. No. Um, so. You have to work tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, my, my best concert experience actually happened, um, I guess I was like seven. I think I was 17. Um, I, I was really, really into Elvis Costello. Okay. And so, um, weirdly enough, yeah, I... It could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah, no, no. Um, and and I found it, like, my, my dad was like, hey, like, you know, Elvis Costello was playing um, at the Nike on Theater over Long Island. And I'm like, oh, great, yeah, I'll, I'll totally go. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's like, who's opening for him? I was like, oh, no, no, he's the opening act. I'm like, well, who's, who's going then? And he's like, oh, it's a police concert. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking awesome. I would love to go see this concert. So I went, and that concert was the best fucking time I've ever had at, a, at any kind of musical event. I could see that. Um, cause, A, two great bands, but B, um, it was Elvis Costello's last night on that, like, tour, oh. like, he was, like, leaving, All right. and so, um, they're playing, uh, oh, God, what, uh, what song was I, I think it was, no, it wasn't Allison. It might have been Allison. Um, but they come, like, he's playing, and all of a sudden, like, Four other people rush the stage in like these like giant like uh, wigs, like based off Elvis yeah. Costello's old haircut, and it's like the the police are now playing with Elvis Costello. That's and, pretty boss. Yeah, it was a good show. Um, yeah, so you know memories. Cool. <laughs> um, so that. So what are we talking about now? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so aside from Comic Con, I was been doing. I'm playing a lot of Shadows of Mordor. What do you think of it? You're, I, you're making a face. You're making a scratch no, no, face. No, no, I like it. I like it. It's actually, um, it's I'm, been a while since I turned on my Xbox One to play a game, and I've been enjoying it a lot because, um, it's 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 uh it's a lot like Assassin's Creed, which I like. Okay. Um, but it's sans the story almost like. This, is there like a? There is a story. Middle Earth. Yeah. Story and okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't put much time into it because, um. 
the game or the story? The story. Yes. The story. The, the, it's very sandbox like. Okay. Um, the game opens up. You just have like this area, and like you're like, oh, like the whole the whole objective is like you're like um, trying to kill these captains. Um, and honestly, that's been the most like I've been completely entertained just killing captains. I haven't really been playing the story missions at all. I think the story, from what I've heard, is like kind of like. Eh. Given how much I like Dark Souls, like mm-hmm. I feel like that's something that I would eat, eat right up. It's um, I don't know if it's as difficult as Dark Souls. I don't necessarily mean that. I just mean the kind of emergent gameplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like it's very like make your own. Yeah, story of it. Um, my friend actually has been playing it. and He said he's like already put fifty hours into it. And I'm like, that's insane. You know? oh. Yeah, yeah. So no, I've, I've been looking forward to playing this. I think we're probably going to tackle it over Thanksgiving when uh, he also is back from Australia. You definitely should. From what I hear, because I'm, I'm still like in the first area, but there's like this really like you get to the second area and it's all green. Oh well. Yeah, and I'm like I'm like this whole game takes place within Mordor, so I'm like that really like that makes sense. And like my fr- my friends telling me about it, it's like yeah you know like. You learn a lot about the lore of Mordor because I feel like that like hmm. you don't really gain that from like I like I, I have read the books but like you don't really gain that from like the movies at all. You just see it as like Mordor is this evil place. Yeah, it's so, black, it's volcano, yeah, it's shitty, rock so, town. Um, he's talking about rock town. He's talking about he's like oh you like you know it's like it's a former human kingdom, and um, you learn of kind of like you kind of see like where that kind of goes into. You learn about the like, kind of like the creatures. You're gross. Like, Stop it. You just look in his paws. You have a cat. Who is equally gross, if not more so? <laughs> yeah, um, I cast disgusting. <laughs> it's gr- um, so it's kind of cool to see like Mordor different than the whole black and like volcanic and destruction oriented. Like, the whole game takes place in Mordor. The whole the whole game. Okay. The whole game takes place in Mordor, from what I understand. It's cool to see if there's a little bit of variety to Mordor. Then um, I'll spoil the first like two minutes. Is like basically <gasps> like um, you know the Black Gate. I know of it. Yeah, you know, you know of the black. Okay, <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's fine. <laughs> we'll so, you know, Pilgrim Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, you're a ranger that's been like exiled from like his kingdom, and he's like, and you you live on the Black Gate, like the Black Gate before it was evil, like belonged oh. to the men, and like it's kind of like kept them in rather than out. Kind of like the wall in a yeah yeah exactly Game of Thrones okay. yeah mm-hmm. Song of Ice and Fire yeah. Song of Ice and Fire. I should read that. You haven't, have you? No, I haven't. Guess what I learned the other day. What? That uh, George R. R. Martin actually has book six done, and he's fucking sitting on it until the end of uh, this next HBO season. Or- <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> that's so, so fucked up. That's, that's what the internet says. Well, with, that's what the internet with, says, or no, 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 George no. R. Martin saying? With, with some very good validation. George R. R. Martin may have said it himself. I don't know. I read it enough to believe it. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. But at least that means he's still working on 7 now. As so opposed, what is the, as opposed, what's the point of that? What do you mean? Like, what's the point of sitting on it? Except to maybe do a simultaneous release, but then like... Uh, because apparently there's some stuff... Oh, that In was... either the show or the book that would fuck with the other. Oh, oh, like they're different, like dramatically different. Or like... Uh, their ordering is pretty different. Like we just got done with what, season four of the show, mm-hmm. and it's it's finishing book three stuff, you know, for the bulk of the story. But a few of the characters' timelines have skipped to like book five. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they need to do both. Because like like Feast of Crows, there's a Feast of Crows, or in the yeah. four and five. Feast for happens Crow. simultaneously, right. but it's like five is like Daenerys' side, and then like four. Yeah, is they're like, separated okay. by geography. Mm-hmm. This is even still like doing a little bit different from that because they started with the whole like brand thing, and instead of putting him way on the back burner, they just kept it going, kept it and going. now they're up to the end of book five for Bran. So okay, he's not in the next season. So that's the thing. Like I don't, and I'm telling you, I haven't read the book, so I have no that's idea fine. where it's going. Um, other than, like, Mandy kind of mentions it to me sometimes, because I, you know how I am. Have I ever, have you ever, like, seen a show with me or a movie, and, like, hit with, like, Mandy next to me, and I'm like, hey, what happened? What's going on? What's happening? What's uh, happening? Tell me how it uh, ends. Tell me how it ends. <laughs> she hates that. Hates so much. We went to go see Gone Girl. What? We went to go see Gone Girl. Okay. Um, and she read the book, because she's a woman. 
And I just hear that as one word, like Gone Girl, Gone Girl, Gone Girl, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> That's that. G O N G O R I L, Gone Girl, Gone Girl, um, <laughs> Coral, Coral. Um, so we went to go see Gone Girl, and uh, she read the book. So I'm like, Hey, what's How's happening? That? What's happening? Tell me what happens. Who's that? Um, and she didn't. Thank God, because that movie is very dependent on its ending. So um, I. That's fine. If you think I've seen it, it's good. Yeah, you should see it. It's not really a date movie. I don't know. Did you see it with Abby or no? Have you read no, the book? Abby did that to me the other day with uh, Way of Kings. She spoiled it for you? No, I asked her to spoil it for me, and oh. she deliberately lied to me. Oh, good. That's what a wife does. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's what someone that truly cares about you does. They they deliberately, you know what? Actually, she's like that. I lied to you because I wanted that reveal that to be even better. Mandy. And I'm like, ah, oh, thank you, but ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Mandy, um, we were sick like two weeks ago. We were both like really fucking sick, so um... This is going to be the longest fucking video. Uh, yeah, well... It's whatever, we don't even need to post it. We yeah, can just talk about we it. we can talk about it. Um, my, Mandy had gotten sick and I was sick as well, so I got her a copy of uh, Thor The Dark World. Because she hadn't seen that it. That is the worst fucking movie. Really? You don't like it? I hated that movie. She likes Tom Hiddleston a lot. Mm-hmm. So you know that scene where Tom Hiddleston like... I just hate that movie. It was... Sorry, That's fine. you can hate it. It's so cool. You have your yeah, opinion. Just, you have your opinion. You're an American citizen. I didn't think it told a good story. That's fine. I didn't think it told a story. I didn't think its characters were anything except for Loki. It's except for Loki, she she's like a huge fan of Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. So like, um, I mean, why wouldn't you? That once she's like, oh, I'm sick. I want to see something with Tom Hiddleston. I'm like, oh, let's get Thor: The Dark World. So totally forgetting that he like has that like scene where he like gets stabbed through the fucking heart. Yeah, um, but he's still alive. Yeah, that's the thing. So like, she's like. Andrew, why would you do that? Why would you... I'm sick, and you're, like, making me watch this movie where Tom Hiddleston dies, and I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. And she's like, what do you mean you forgot about that? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you would have just enjoyed it because he's in it so much, and I was like, I didn't tell her about the ending. And so, like, we're watching and watching Had you seen it before? Yeah. Oh, okay. I saw it. And so she's like, Arr. And so we get the ending, and I'm Ooh. like, hey, Tom Hiddleston's alive, and she just, like, kind of looked at me, and she's like, you knew all along. You knew all along. Thank you for not spoiling it, but at the same time... Fuck you. Fuck you. Thank you, fuck you. Thank you, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm glad... You know, if you have someone significant out there, like a significant other... Um, help them enjoy things. Help them enjoy things by lying to them. <laughs> and if uh, if you wanted something spoiled for you, hopefully they'll lie for you, too. Um, <laughs> hey, little guy. Your dog is a cat. I know, he's... I also sometimes think of him as like a like a parrot because he just like lays Ugh. on people like he just doesn't say do stuff. It's like a good dog. This dog had aggression issues we, well, apparently before we got him, and yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah, I could tell. I don't fucking believe it. Look at this. Look at this. Pretty aggressive. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> well, I'm so glad Mandy convinced us to get you. Yeah. She's been wanting to get a pig lately. Oh my god. Yeah, like a, like a small pig. All of my friends, like everyone today, sent me pictures of cute raccoons, and I can't <laughs> take it. I want a raccoon so bad. What would you name your raccoon? No. Pilfer. Pilfer. <laughs> like Swiper? <laughs> Swiper, that's my raccoon. That's my raccoon. I told her if we get a pick, I get to name it, and I'm going to name it Ogden, after um, the character in Dragon Age. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like it'd be a good name. I'd name my raccoon Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, man. I'm trying to think. Oh, so... Not really related at all, but kind of like movie related. Can you hand me that? Which? The giant gold box. Whoa. So I've decided to watch the entirety of Stargate SG-1. I've had this for like years. And I've already watched it all. But, um, yeah, it is ten seasons. I never got into Stargate. That's fine. You can... Is it good? It's... (laughs) Is it fine? (laughs) Richard Dean Anderson's in it. it. It is Richard Dean Anderson, and it is good in that way. But it's also a little dated. Um, there are certain things that are like, uh, it's, still, wait, wait, wait. it's not bad. What it's, did you say the other day that you really wanted to like secretly be a Stargate remake? Oh, no, no. Independence Day was supposed to be a Stargate remake. A remake or a sequel? Sequel, sequel, sequel. Fuck, really? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was supposed to be like, oh, we destroyed, like, spoilers for Stargate the movie coming out in 1990. Um... <laughs> It was supposed to be like, we destroyed this alien, and now the aliens have come to destroy us. 
And they're like, eh, fuck it, let's make it a just a separate dumb alien, yeah, dumb alien movie because like the ship design's a little similar. Yeah. Um, but this sh- this show because they're talking about re- they are talking about rebooting Stargate, but with like none of this as canon, which is almost a disservice because all you have is like for Stargate is like a three hour movie, and then you have ten seasons of show, and you're gonna disregard this. How, how are you even gonna reboot it without? I mean. I know. It's ridiculous. Um, I hope they change their mind on that. Um, and, no, you know, no. it's all whispers anyway. But um, if, if, if any of you haven't seen it, and if you haven't seen it, I would recommend just it'll checking be, it out. It'll be almost as good as season two of Firefly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Serenity was pretty good. Um, Serenity was pretty good. The show, it's, um... Are you drooling? No, he's licking. Okay. Um, the show, like... That's way better. It, it combines, like, a lot of, like... It, it's very episodic, so it's like... Planet of the Week with, like, mythology, too. It's just kind of yeah. Star trek Yeah, like it's, TNG. It's, exactly. It's, okay. it's, it's really Star trek Um, It, like, almost burns Canadian in that, like, hey, like, let's figure out low-budget ways to make a show that looks like it's high-budget. That's pretty excellent. Yeah, um, because it's, like, all the scene, like, all the major, majority of the show takes place in this, like, one small facility, and, like, it, it, it's, 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 oh, you're stuck. Um, it's really cool to see, like, like rewatching a show that's like ten years in the making. Because it's like I grew up, I grew up watching this show. I think I spent like, man, like I don't remember when it ended, but like, like so basically after like ten seasons of this, and then I have another five seasons of Stargate Atlantis to watch. Jesus. And then I have one season of Stargate Universe, but I feel like I'm not even gonna watch that. That's that show is a train wreck. Huh. So. Anyway, this is what I've been doing a lot lately. And I haven't been playing Shadows of Mordor, like, you know, sleeping. So, um... So oh. that's pretty much what's up with me. Can I uh, tell one last story and then... Oh, yeah, no, please, 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 please. So, it's talking about TV, made mm-hmm. me think about uh, my adventures in TV this week. Mm-hmm. So, I don't really want cable. I haven't had cable for years. No reason to have it. don't really care. Mm-hmm. Um... John really wants or wanted cable for the point of like not having to dig through garbage streams to watch garbage quality versions of sports games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's a sports guy. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Baseball and some football. Mm-hmm. So you know, on top of what we were already paying for internet, it was like twenty bucks more a month for screaming. For fucking, we started out paying thirty a month, and they upped it to sixty, and instead of fighting, Abby just We pay over. $74 a month for our internet. Jesus Christ. So, I know. Ne- like I said, for 20 more than we were paying, we get, like, screaming fast internet. We, we got Fios. Yeah, you got Fios, yeah. So we get the TV and mm-hmm. the internet, and it's like 85 a month, I think. I think I'm going to switch. Yeah. So, here's what happened, mm-hmm. is, like, Tuesday, the installation guy's coming in, John's home, because he doesn't have to work until later that day. Mm-hmm. And I get a text from John that said, uh, Cable Guy was installing stuff, and the circuitry in our house sucks, and we blew up my stereo and your TV. Oh, your really nice TV? It's, it's fine. Like, it's like, like your living room TV? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. The, the, yeah, the, like upstairs, something. So, Coax touched the. You know, cover of his stereo, mm-hmm. neither of which should have had anything, you know, largely electric, because you know, the outside of coaxial was mm-hmm. shielding. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah. But like a big popping spark. There's a char mark on his stereo now, uh-huh. and uh, that circuit happened to also be the one downstairs in the living room, mm-hmm. and fortunately, nothing else got fried except. TV, mm-hmm. but like all the caps and the power board and the TV are gone. Like mm-hmm. we looked into getting it repaired, you know, the TV repair guy or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's you know, basically they're as, gonna pay for that, right? Like, well, it, it's it wasn't Fios's fault that the house is shittily wired. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, our landlord might help us out with that. Okay. Yeah. But it costs just as much to get a new TV as it would to like a yeah, ours. like a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, so, like, when I got this text at work, it lasted for, like, 
10 minutes, but for those 10 minutes, I was just so pissed. I was like, Gredge fucking Lations, you got cable that I didn't want and you <laughs> broke my TV. <laughs> Hope you're happy. Hope you're happy not watching your dumb cable on TV. <laughs> it's and almost then, like a Xanatos Gambit. Where it's like, you're like, oh, you want to watch TV? Okay, fine. We'll get you cable. And then you blow up the TV and it's, it's like, now no one gets it. It's gift of the Magi shit. Yeah, like a monkey's paw. Where you're like, you get the wish and it's like, here's the TV or the cable. You can't use it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got one wish left. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, now we and watch baseball games that don't look like they were vomited on a television screen. I remember screen. that one time we tried to watch the Yankee game and yeah. it was just a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Like, th- When was that? We were. Why was that at your house? Was that the election? Oh, yeah. Was that, it was base- we watched the election. I think there was baseball. You were over for the like Sony live stream. Oh, right, because E3 was happening, yeah, too. that was fun. Oh, that was a day. That was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was several different times. That wasn't yeah, all one. That wasn't one time. Yeah, that would be a yeah. very, like... Eventful day. Yeah. So yeah, so I guess we have cable now, which I don't really care about because congratulations. I still don't like sitting down in front of the TV for. Well, that's when John was like, "Oh, it's date night. I have to watch Scandal." John's not here because he had to watch Scandal with his girlfriend. Like, you can't fucking watch that at any time at all. And also decided that like a half hour before he was supposed to be here. Yeah, he forgot. He forgot. Okay. It's anyway, not worth ripping John apart. No, 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 no. I, I appreciate date night. You, yeah, no, we all night. appreciate. We all understand so, date night. You gotta, you gotta do it. Yeah. Anyway, I appreciate you coming over and staying yeah, for. Oh my god! So this was, we spent a lot of Fuck. time talking. I haven't seen you in a while, so this is good. It has been like three or four weeks since we even saw each other in passing. So, mm-hmm. well, except except for Saturday, Saturday when right. I saw you in passing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I should do if we if now that Nardo's ending. We it's should do the Wednesday hangout day. Wednesday hangout day, but I'm, here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm right. going to start doing like a not a weekly word thing, but I'm start inviting people over just to sit in my couch and talk to them for like an hour. Between two ferns, between, yeah, almost like between two ferns, right. except like just talking about random bullshit. Not That's like, fine. yeah, we should do that. That'd be a lot. Of and fun. not scripted. And not scripted. Just, oh. And not involving Justin Bieber. <sighs> if Justin Bieber wanted to come on my show, I would, I guess, let him. But I don't feel like he would. You, a waste his time with me and B um, be a very entertaining guest because I feel like all we'd really talk about is like so you got a rest recently for like this random thing <laughs> tell me what it's like to be a national pariah <laughs> it was like to be a scumbag <laughs> and <laughs> for somehow to make Canadians hate you yeah exactly it's like he is not a representative of our of our community because he does not apologize for anything <laughs> um, yeah so all right well thank you so much for coming I. <laughs> You make it sound like I'm here as a special guest spot. You are my special guest. I cool. love when you come over. Speaking of that, yeah. we actually, we should, um, you know what we should do again? We should do a game night. But we should do it at your house because, okay. so you know, I just don't have to come out here all the time. <laughs> I love it that, like, the reason your house was put up on offer was because, like, John's like, oh, we gotta do it at Andy's because I'm over here all the time now. Yeah. Like, he basically lives with. Yeah, that's what I asked. It was like, you're never not at M's place, are you? And yeah. Like, mm. Well, except for Wednesdays, and it's like, so you live there, except you have no storage space of your own, and you don't. Your name's on the lease, and you don't pay rent. Which, hey, you know, hey, he there's still, a worse situation. He still has a house of his own. It's yeah, not, exactly. Like, it's a house of his own that he's there. never at. Yeah. Yeah, and which, a cat. I don't blame him. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's Dan's cat. Yeah. I like his cat. His cat. His cat's a bit of a dick. Oh yeah, is yeah. I don't it's know. Super hyperactive. Well, I've never had a cat, so you you can. T- ugh, yeah, we're That's making this longer, but um, whatever. We don't even post this. Yeah, we can post uh, it in chunks that no chunks. one cares about. Right. Um, so I've never had a cat, so I don't know the behavior of cats. But um, I was. It's definitely a kitten. Yeah, I was sleeping, and um, I was I was noticing like a little like. Hey. Like hey hey hey, hey, hey fuck you I'm a cat <laughs> fuck you I'm a cat um, like he's just scratching me like he's reaching under the blanket scratching my arms and he's also biting me and I'm like man fuck you. and I'm trying to sleep I'm all, this is, any night I stay over at Don, Dan and John's is a night that I am hung like too drunk to drive mm-hmm. that's the only reason why I'm there so I'm laying on this couch and I'm and I'm sleeping and um, and I'm just like I need to figure out a, a really low cost energy way to like deal with this fucking cat. So basically, I like, oh yeah, he'll like, he'll go out like this if you don't have him. Yeah, bro. 
Um, so I'm laying, and I'm, like, fucking, like, tucking myself in, like, like I'm a fucking five-year-old, like, Burrito. like, burritoing myself, <laughs> and, um, and the cat, you know, bless his fucking heart, is still trying to do it. So he's like, he's like, I'm gonna get you, you fucker. And, like, and so I'm like, well, I'm gonna go, like, you know, when you're that tired, you're like, I can't fight to stay awake. So I'm gonna go unconscious, and then, you know, like, you'll get, like, the, like, the one occasional scratch, and, like, it's just enough to wake you up. You know how people talk about cats being, like, smarter than dogs, but not near as loyal? Mm-hmm. That's the smarter than dogs part. It's like, they know what they're doing, and they will sometimes act out of spite just because they can. Like the Joker of pets. It's, it is not that it seems like they're acting out of spite. Mm-hmm. It is spite-motivated. Sp- <laughs> I read this interesting... Dis- rage peeing. I read this interesting <laughs> statistic about, like, uh, cats... That there's, like, this brain parasite that affects, like, 10% of Americans and, like, 55% of Europeans. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, like... Transmitted by, like, cat feces. Cat feces uh-huh. that, like, like it causes you to want to have cats? Or, like... I don't uh-huh. know. Yeah, it was, like... It basically is, like... It, it, it makes the smell of cat urine less offensive. Ugh. And, like, it also makes it... But you're also, like, twice as likely to have a car accident because of it or something. It's really weird. I don't know that. Because it, like, affects your, like, motor sc- like, your brain chemistry or something. I don't know. I don't know if I believe it, but I read it on Reddit, which which means if it's on the internet, it has to be true. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, Obviously. Reddit is the oh bastion of God. truth and sanctity. Wait, okay. Um, so this is going to get political for a second. Did you... As no, as no, as no, as no, 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 it's not. As no, long as not. you don't no, fucking not. mention things no. that begin with G. You know what? This is over. <laughs> this is a I personal broke it. conversation. I broke it. All right. All right. Good night, everyone.